Hello, beekeepers. I'm Jim Two, providing a support video for the September 2020 issue of Bee Culture Magazine, in which I've got an article coming out that I wrote about a surprise flower garden that I came up with, and it kind of got me onto the theme of things because I'm standing here knee deep in clover. That's a weed by societal standards that I let run rampant as a bit of a food source for my beehives behind the fence here. It's not enough. I freely admit that the main thing that clover serves is for me to capture photographs and just watch and see what's going on, but a strange thing happened. As I built, let the clover go, it began to, began to provide cover for moles and mice and whatever else. It's not like I'm just seeing these animals run wild everywhere. Rabbits have been here too, groundhogs. But I guess what I'm admitting to is when you do this kind of thing, you also invite in other animals that you didn't know you were inviting. So one of the things that really surprised me was for the entire morning last week, a large red-tailed hawk sat in the tree there above the camera for the longest time, monitoring the situation, and would occasionally swoop down and capture something here for lunch or a snack or whatever, and off it would go back up to the trees. All the little birds going crazy, chirping, chirping, chirping all around because the hawk was here. I found myself being quiet and gentle, trying not to disturb the animal in this relationship. They had a big conflict with the squirrel here. I got some still photography of that. And what I unintentionally learned was that simply by letting my lawn go, I ended up making a multi-tiered ecosystem that actually brought in other kinds of insect life. Some of it I didn't want, Japanese beetles. But I also brought in bees and moths and other pollinators. Ended up being very pleasant. So a combination of me planting flower seed about this time a year ago, resulting in a surprise garden in the front of the shop. And then me letting the weeds go here had a very pleasant effect and made me realize the complexity of beekeeping. So much of the time is just beekeeping for us. But in reality, the bees are a part of a much bigger picture. We talk all the time about pollination and the value of pollination. But then to actually see the environment change with nothing any more complex than just not cutting grass for a couple of weeks it was really insightful into how much wildlife would come and would be a part of this. I enjoyed it very much. I'm standing here now with the sweet aroma of clover in the air. The wildflowers, the native flowers in the front of the shop have their own odor. I discussed that. I've discussed it before. There's no way to write about it. There's no way to, to capture it and to let you know the smell of waxed moth damaged equipment, of the pheromone odor that comes when I'm stung, of the gentle smell that's back there now of honey being processed. And I realized standing there by the hives a few days ago that you draw a lot of conclusions from the colony. If you smell American fowl brood, it lunges out at you. If you smell rotting and decaying equipment, if you smell packaged bees in the back of the car coming home, impossible to write about those things. I enjoyed giving it a try. And honest, in all honesty, it wasn't my best effort this month, but I, I do hope that the point I was trying to make that beekeeping and bees are a part of a much bigger system. And it's a very pleasant, rewarding system when it works. Thanks for watching this and thanks for reading the article. I appreciate it very much.